Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's for this world. Welcome back. Welcome home. Welcome fam to another episode of Don't Be Telling My Business. Why are you telling my business? Because I can't can and I can't can can't can and I will. Okay? Yes, we are non-biased over here, honey. When you having something out in them uh, social media streets, and I take a fancy to taking my time and trying to uh, look at the commentary or look on my social media platforms, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. And I be like, that's some foul ass shit. That is just not acceptable. Okay. I got to talk about it. Okay. And I'm not saying it's right. I ain't saying it's wrong either. I'm just saying it's my opinion. And I want to talk about it. So, like I do, I talk to my real family in my real life. And then I come over here and talk to my real family on my YouTube station. Okay? How they say birds, those that flock together, birds that flock together. Shit, what my I go? Birds something. It's about birds and flocking together. I can't think of it right now. Maybe my family can drop it in the comments. But like I said, when I get taping, honey, it be freestyling over him. Uh, birds of a feather, uh, birds of a feather flock together. Yes, yeah, so like-minded people, such as my family members, and then we have some disgruntled uh, family members that just want to get their point out and just try try to be ugly about it. But you know, we got to set them straight. We got to give them the, the the format here. Be respectful. Don't come over here and talk and junk. Talk about subject matter. It ain't about nobody hating on somebody. It's just like, what if you have a family member that was acting like this person you so-called like in the public eye, in the public format, these celebrity stars, these reality stars. Hell, they all human. They put on their drawers just like everybody else, and they put on their panties like everybody else. They have their good times. They have their bad times. They have their good points. They have their bad points. They have their yin and their yang. The only thing that's different is they be showing out in public, okay? They be trying to say they one way, then they go around here and act a whole nother different way, and they try to make excuses. Now, I can see if they were up there just trying to do the darn thing and say, well, damn, I was wrong. Let me go on my platform and just say, well, I was wrong. I was just mad. I was being human, you know. Just keep it straight. Keep it 100. Be transparent. We don't have nothing to say about it. But I'm sorry when you are in that fishbowl that you chose to be in. Because you could have had a professional job. Could have been out here working like everybody else. 9 to 5. Professional job. Honorable. Moralistic. Have values behind yourself. But when you want to go into the world of entertainment. It's just there what it is. You know what I'm saying? And you can't get mad because people have opinions. and going to come out and tell you about them. Just the way it is. That's why you make so much money out this world. Being on these crazy reality TV shows. And you get to live the lack of luxury like you always wanted to. But guess what? It comes with some type of criticism. Be it bad. Be it good. Sometimes we hopefully those journalists that's out there. Which I am not. Okay. I'm a commentary. Uh, uh, what do you call it? I am a. What am I? Other than a YouTube person. But. I like commentary, so I talk about commentary. I talk about people, okay, that I want to talk about. All right, nothing bad against them, nothing good about against them. You know, just a yin and a yang. I just have an opinion on what they're doing out there, and if I don't like it, I speak about it. That's why I made my platform. Make yours if you want to, and I might just drop by and say, "Hmm, okay," but I never disrespect anyone's platform or try to tell anybody how to do their thing. But like I said, Portia, she's a runner. She's a track star. As we all know, Portia likes to fight. That's why she went to that alternative schooling, which we call open campus. All right. She's showing her true colors. And Nene, Nene tried to tell her from Jump Street when she was sitting up there dragging Kenya hair around that, that dirty ass flow. Stop getting caught on camera. If you want to hit somebody, you want to be violent, whatever, don't put it on camera. And of course, yes. Did Kenya provoke using her props to get a rise out of Portia? Yes. But did she hit Portia? No. That's the difference. Props and assault. You see where I'm going with this? And Fallon, she's winning because she ain't saying too much. You know what I'm saying? She living her life. She got with Simon. Didn't work out. You could say she cheated with the help or whatnot. It is what it is. Can we say Portia cheated? 
I would say yes. I know she got in that, that time with Bolo. I don't know if for certain because I wasn't there. It's just my gut feeling. All right. She wasn't going to pass on nobody looking like that. Hopefully, she used the condom. She wrapped it up. It is what it is. But at the same time, I believe she was with Dennis McKinley. So, maybe that's what Mama Gina talking about. All right. But Portia don't care about anyone from what we're seeing now. What we're seeing on television when she's in the social media streets when she's posting on her social media platforms she told this one lady that was on her instagram on her twitter account uh damn a grade <laughs> like what this was the exact picture she put on her twitter account account because it's one follower of hers i can't say she was a fan or she was a foe she had wrote about how Porsche was just being disgusting out in these streets and that she do have a child. She needs to set the, uh, a better example for other people that admire Porsche or fans of Porsche and they want to be like Porsche. Porsche has an obligation not only to herself but to her child and to the public at large because she is an activist. She comes from a wealth uh, or a plethora of uh, legacy. Well, let me let me just clean that up because I'm kind of confused myself. She comes from a family on her dad's side that are known in Atlanta. Okay, the streets of Atlanta. Her grandfather was Jose Williams. He started the first female, not female, but uh, the first food bank that hit the whole Georgia region. You know what I'm saying? It was on fire. And it's just more so for low-income people, uh, homeless people and all that thing. But he started it. He developed it. He managed it. And, you know, he kept it going. Now his daughter is taking up the, the gauntlet. And she's doing the same thing her dad do, did to uphold the legacy of no one needs to starve out there on the streets. And they definitely don't need to be homeless. Not with all this resources going around him. But when you have two birds that flock together and stay together like them too, they're going to always be losing when they think they're winning. Because they don't know how to control their mouths. And then he walked out of perfect opportunity. Portia pretty much done dragged herself out of her uh, bags of uh, income as well. Now, whether she'll be able to get them back, she destroyed her family. It wasn't just Dennis. She destroyed it too. Poor PJ. We all keep her in prayer. Hopefully, Dennis do that darn thing get that uh, court record document signed, sealed, and delivered. Because she thinks this elderly man is going to be young in her mind. But we all know that can see and hear. That man, oh, she going to become his caregiver. And she talking about she winning. No, baby, you ain't winning. Because Fallon, at least I can say she's still raising children. Hopefully some of them children will take care of her when she get her, her elderly mood. Because right now she's still young, fun. and ha Well, she's still young, fabulous, and having fun, okay? Living on her own terms, doing what she need to do. Making her own legacy with her new boo. Her husband. I think did they get married? Yeah, I know they had a baby, but I don't know if they got. No, they get married this year, October. Okay, yeah, yeah. So she's still a fiance at this time, a, a, a glorified girlfriend. But this nut right here, both of them are nuts to me. Just call them spade with a spade. Yeah, they both money hungry. They greedy. They want the fame, fortune, and they would do well in that industry. Okay, in that greedy satanic industry that they love, cause power breeds. Uh, greed, greed breeds power, and nothing good. It's just all dark. You see what I'm saying? And manifesting everything is dark because that's their love. For the love of money, you will kill for your brother. For the love of money, y'all know I'm going with that, okay? But anyway, people don't have money, don't let money change you. Oh, my dollar. Yes, that's what they like. They love it. And she's in royalty. Talking about she royalty by riding that purple. Girl, please go away. Go away. Go away. But anyway, she's sitting up there talking about Fallon. Why are you sitting up there talking about Fallon? Why are you talking about y'all not friends? Okay. Yeah, because you stole a husband. You stole a lifestyle. And <laughs> you think you're winning. But you're actually losing, Porsche. But we'll let you keep that in mind. We'll let you be winning. Even though everything that I'm saying are facts. Okay. Or at least I think they facts. Hey, we're going to say allegedly anyway because we really don't know. We're only going by what they give us. But Portia, 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 Portia. The more you sit up here and put shit out on yourself that you're doing to yourself to get attention, be it good or bad, you're still getting attention. You still got people putting, their, putting your name in their mouths, making videos. Writing stories because it ain't just about the YouTube vloggers. You got People Magazine, you got OK Magazine, you, you you got Essence Magazine, you got BT. Hey, 
they telling the good side as well as the bad side but we don't see nobody up there uh you know we don't have proof that they're up there doing the same thing like they be trying to do to the youtubers you know trying to call us haters and all that we ain't haters i ain't hating not one day and i ain't tell you one person i'm loving on another person i'm non-biased if you do some foul shit out there i'm coming at you especially if if i liked it you at one time or i saw you in a positive light and you start doing some crazy stuff around him and you damn 40 years old going to be 41 god willing okay and you sitting up here what are you doing what are you I, i'm still trying if you winning by in this debauchery type s- s- satanic type format of a, a livelihood income base you want to be a part of go ahead just say you want to do that and i'm sure you'll never hear about me again come like she said she want to do that what I, hey why would i defute her why would i waste any more time on her but it just is what it is but you got this grandpa over him that you saying oh i love him he loved me like that barney song i love you you love me we are great big family with a bunch of hoops. I, I don't forgot the song because my daughter was four years old at the time. Three or four years old now. Everything was just born and born and born. Anybody who remember born in the big red, I mean the big purple dinosaur, I think he was. Hell, that's where the song come from. But yeah, she think this is her ticket to Hollywood, Hollywood, to the easy lifestyle. And of course, I'm sure her mother told her, baby, marry rich marry well off so you can just sit and smell the roses all day long have children and be fabulous okay that's a dream that's a dream that everybody pretty much get enticed with when they're little girls and they want the husband and the white picket fence and the dog or the cat about four children nice job the woman being a housewife well we know at one point if there ever was a point in the black community to have that type of dream okay got it good whatever but we hustlers now you had that dream you said with cordell stewart look how it turned out and then you said you didn't even know you were getting divorced he didn't tell you but you got divorced anyway by his doing had a fiance glorified boyfriend look what happened to that noel and boy you didn't like the mama. You came for the mama. And you didn't want to sign a prenup. Dead. Now you got Simon Gabadia. Okay. I could quiet as it's kept on them streets. Lies. I'm going to speak it out. They said you took Fallon's husband. Even though they were separated at the time. You didn't care. You was always in his DMs. While he was sulking or whatever he was doing. And trying to uplift his spirits. When you should have been in Fallon's uh, DMs on her social media platform doing the same damn thing you were doing to Simon. What you did, you did. Now Simon's salty because you don't moved on with your life. You don't got uh through with him. I don't know if he paying you child to put well alimony or whatnot. Who knows? Okay, but you living with a younger man. You are getting married to him, God willing. You know, in October, uh, and you living your best life. And this little nut, she don't went through one divorce one bad breakup and had a baby by her baby daddy with the breakup now she's talking about oh this man right here loves me but he giving you re-gifted gifts or same thing he gave his uh recent divorced wife don't understand it you out here publishing a book that was 30 something dollars when you brought it out less than a month it went down to 13 dollars tell me you win it really okay uh then what did you do you go on the rick and smiling morning show and dared gary with the t as well as the brat and her section of where she gossip about celebrities did you silence them did you beg them did you tell rick and smiler please tell your style don't talk about me because i'm already in a lot of hot mess because i have heard nothing i mean it's crickets over there they have said nothing about you in a derogatory way that they would have tore up anybody else and dropped the tea on any other celebrity here in georgia or wherever out throughout the world hell they even go talk about the queen over there okay in britain in europe but nothing it's mom's the word so i know you did that mess then you had to take yourself on big tigger's morning show and talk to them but you ain't no good we thought they just threw you up under the bus in that little document with that uh dungeon thing but you see it's like you threw phaedra up under the bus because you the one came out smelling like a rose and then uh 
you try to say well it was all her fault it was all her fault i was just saying what she told me maybe she entrusted that in you for you not to tell but how the tables have turned oh my oh my portion you should have went out the door with phaedra but somebody threw you a lifeline okay they saw something in you a fantastic uh reality showbiz I don't know, start him, I guess. I don't know. Maybe Andy liked you. Like I say, maybe bisexual. He kind of liked the little uh, swirl thing going on. Who knows, okay? But the whole thing is about, my love, you say you're winning. But all these things I have spat out to you, doesn't seem like you're winning. But anyway, like I said, your piss poor ass, you had to sit up there, throw shit out in the street, and then want to hold your hands behind your back like you ain't do nothing okay like don't throw at glass houses that you know will break karma is a mess so why are you out here trying to clap back at one of your followers or foes i'm not sure on your twitter account why are you trying to say damn a grave like that's something big bold and you know said might drop all in one what the hell is going on with you Portia but I don't know that was just my spiel that I gave y'all for 15 minutes now we're going to go on and get into this article that yahoo.com wrote up on Miss Portia Wiz or I should say in combination or in collaboration with Atlanta Black Stock okay it was a diamond uh Junie her last name she put it out today um, and she titled it, This Show Has Her Looking Crazy. Portia Williams claps back at a Twitter user who claimed the star ruined her career with Portia Family Matters. Now, that person is not the only one that feels that way. I feel that way. A host of other people feel that way. Are we saying everybody? No, we don't like to generalize on this channel. But a good plenty of people, yes, Portia, that set the tone on whether or not you should get a second season of that disaster of Portia Family Matters. Okay? And somebody listening and somebody looking at the rate ratings. Okay? It's just writing on the wall, proof in the pudding, something in the milk ain't clean, baby. Okay, that's what I'm saying. But you say you out here winning. We're going to continue on with this article. It says Portia Williams fans are speaking out about the star's negative portrayal on her series, Portia Family Matters. Okay, the January 17th social media comments follow a tweet Williams responded to after a user claimed that the Bravo show potentially ruined her career. A spinoff to The Real Housewives of Atlanta. The show featured Williams, her, they say fiance, but I'm say glorified boyfriend. I'm not going to give him that kind of credit because he's been, it's, it's just too much. Okay, it says her ex Dennis McKinley and her family members are premiere in November. Okay, then it says the series showcased Williams attempting to blend her family following her engagement to Gabadia. Throughout the season, Williams' engagement caused issues with McKinley and the pair's co-parenting relationship with their two-year-old daughter, Pilar Johanna McKinley. Things began to go down here after Williams and McKinley got into a physical altercation during a family retreat in Mexico. Or Mexico for some people. The incident ultimately led to the 40 year old swinging on her ex and throwing objects in his direction as he and his mother tried to leave a family dinner. Here we go. Portia is a, a runner. She's a track star. And she's a double, uh, we call it double, wait a minute, WWE uh, wrestler. <laughs> in my mind. But she should partake of it because she loves fighting, child. She loves scrapping. And that's probably why she went to open campus, okay? Because of her behavior, her demeanor, and she couldn't be with other kids that were acting normal and, and, and uh, respectful when they were at school. She probably just going around him, smoking weed, missing classes, cussing out folks, um, uh, flunking her classes, and just a wayward child, a rebellious child. And that's how she ended up at open campus, I'm pretty sure. Because I already told y'all what open campus mean. And ain't nothing good. Unless you got, you know, you're way ahead of the game. And you're trying to get in college earlier. Or you have some deficits. And I mean deficits such as maybe you needed time off because you were pregnant, having a baby, and you just couldn't take the everyday classes. Or you were just being downright nasty in school. You were fighting all the time. You weren't following the rules. 
oh you just having a time and they want to separate you from the good kids you were one of the bad kids so that's what open campus is about if you don't if you don't understand go and google it yourself okay or those who were in high school y'all know what when people had to go to open campus what issues that was formed upon the foundation that built the ideal of having a secondary a secondary school such as that for kids that just did not want to act right. Okay. We're going back to the article. It says. Um, okay. The last episode that aired January 16th. Dealt with the aftermath of the fight. And Williams yet again. Having another heated argument. This time with her cousin Lundy. It stemmed from Lundy. Who previously worked as Williams assistant. Finding out that Williams had her had had, had her fired. From her gig at McKinley's. Ah, <laughs> yes. McKinley's restaurant. Yep. But she denied it. She denied it. She denied it. Okay. And you could tell Portia was lying. She was lying. She was lying. Okay. But I'm pretty sure Lundy read through all her body language and pretty stunned Portia up that she was full of shit. She did it. She just needed confirmation. Okay. But why Lundy uh, shed those tears? I wouldn't have done it, honey. I wouldn't have done it. I was like, ooh, karma going to be a bitch for you, baby. So I'm just going to get out of your presence because I don't want it to mistake me for you. And it come at my door. But thank you, cuz, for a not-so-flattering view you put me on the spinoff. You didn't probably pay me properly. And I really need my check. Where's my check, baby? Where's my check? Okay. That's why I would be saying in that episode. I need my check. How much is my check going to be? You know what I'm saying? So they can record all my ratchetness and how I really felt about you. So I can have one up on you. Because I don't think they would have edited it. They were like, damn, Lundy getting on her like that. I like, cut me my check, dear. Okay? Trick. However you want to be seen today. Cuzzo. Not cuzzo. Enemy. Okay? But anyway, that was just me, not in this article. It said, um, let me see. During the dispute, Williams blamed Lundy for things that didn't pertain to her job, such as not supporting her when she was in an abusive relationship. We know that's bullshit. That's crap. The girl was in her college years. I don't know if she was just starting, meaning she would have entered in 18 or 19 of her years back then, or when she was finishing, where if she went straight in from high school, let's see, 19, 20, 21, 22, she would have been finished at 22 if she did everything correctly. If she was out there partying, flocking classes, we probably had to give her another extra year, so she probably would have made it out between 23, 24, 25. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But. It was what it was. Why are you depending on your young cousin to sit there and, and uh, pat your head, rub your back, and say, ooh, it's going to be okay. No, that's your mama job. That's Lauren's job if she wanted to participate in it. It had nothing to do with a girl that was in college, okay, trying to get her education on and trying to learn about herself. Portia, you say you winning. I don't see it, baby. I don't see it. I see you being selfish, self-centered, and just a troll. Of a being human being, but anyway, going back to the article, it says, um, despite not confessing to the firing claims when approached by Lundy Williams, later admitted in a confessional that she did have a part in her cousin's losing her job. Now, I didn't, re I wait, hold up, despite the con not confessing to the firing claims when approached by Lundy Williams, later admitted in a confessional that she did have a part in her cousin. Losing her job. Following the episode, Williams received massive backlash, including from a Twitter user who shared a jiffy of a grave to symbolize that her career is dead. And one thing, I, I'm like, which one she saying she apologized for? Because that, that, that last episode, she didn't, she wasn't meant to nothing. Okay? She was deflecting. She was being evasive. But she wasn't meant to no wrongdoing. So, is it meaning she remit the firing? Uh, when she was replacing her with Dom, when uh, Lundy had messed up her Chanel bag. Is that the one she's talking about? Because she saw one time out the one where Lundy had um, said she fired her from McKinley's um, restaurant thing where she was an event planner or something. She didn't confess to that. So which one, girl? Which one? Somebody didn't come and straighten it out for me. But anyway, they have a uh, Portia Williams Twitter account. And it has... Um, this lady by the name of Gypsy Lee, 
she said dearly beloved i love this one too she she tripped me out when i saw when i read this i said oh prince on deck okay using the vessel of gypsy lee she goes in to say dearly beloved we are gathered here today to say goodbye to portia's career you know and that prince said we're gathered here today to celebrate this thing called life some I, you know i can't get it right when i want to but anyway y'all remember that prince dearly beloved we're gathered here something okay y'all y'all get with it y'all y'all know what i'm talking about hell google the song y'all y'all will get with it then okay but she goes on to say uh to say goodbye to portia's career she will be remembered as the real housewives of atlanta who made a fool of herself when given an opportunity that couldn't could have went to another deserving housewife she would not be missed hashtag fam portia's family matters okay i'm like lord clap back with the clap back but what she said was absolutely true so what you're trying to say portia damn a great so is your um uh glorified boyfriend simon goodbody if you got into a situation but then that would not be your your call to make that would be diane's call because technically portia uh is not married to you so technically you don't have any rights to her so that would be stowed upon her mother to decide whether she would be cremated um she would put it be put in a mon mon what, not, what do you call that a mausoleum where they're buried in some kind of brick or marble type setting it's not going under the ground it's just like you're being buried in a chest of drawer or you know your drawers like you know you ha in your furniture where you put your clothes in i like uh i like to symbolize it in my brain as a chest of drawer you're being put your body being put in there and we just sealing you up when we push you in you know what i'm saying or you're being buried at a grave site with dirt you know because we are dirt from dirt you were made to dirt you shall return so it's just a glorified way when they put you in a uh, mausoleum it's to not be you know under the earth in a sense okay so that would not be your call that would be Miss Diane called. It wouldn't be Simon called. So what are you talking about? Damn dirt. So you're going to be immortal now? Okay. Are you going to be cloned now? Tell me what's, what's going on. But you can't understand. You, you're being kind of cryptic. And cryptic is not your uh, forte. We, we need to just come on out here and be you like you've always have done. And, and make the news be it good or bad. We need you to, you know, stop being cryptic. Go on and tell us what you want. Go on and tell us what you're working with, baby. Okay. Because it's all you. You winning. You winning. Everything you winning okay okay but going back to the article it says immediately after the post williams retweeted the upload and replied damn a grave as the upload it began circulating on social media many people agreed with the user's tweet and stated that portia family matters has brought out the worst in williams a couple of individuals even mentioned williams's former show real housewives of atlanta no lies told portia can't hide her true colors as well as others the show definitely has painted her in a bad light thus far S she definitely comes off as the villain yeah that show definitely didn't favor portia it honestly just made people go against her she shouldn't have kept her peach while dramatic she's not lying this has to be the worst spinoff idea ever based on how it's playing out i really like portia on real housewives of atlanta but this show has her looking crazy in light of backlash no additional details surrounding a season two renewal or portia's family matters have been released okay and it should not be released <laughs> okay you need to go back in the vault because unless she's gonna come out smelling like a rose this time which is gonna be hard in public opinion because we already done prosecuted her we done sentenced her and pretty much done buried her so and i'm pretty sure that's basically what the um producers and the real executive producers and the ones that cuts their check are looking at they're like well hell well, she ain't gave us too much to work with i mean she good at bringing the drama but what she give us is something of a situation as far as litigation you know we she's a hot head we don't know you know which way she's gonna you know portray her anger to or, or, or anyone in particular you know she might just throw something at the wall and she might just throw something at a person you know what i'm saying and half the time it's gonna be our crew people that we need to be worried about because we ain't, they ain't got no helmets on they ain't got no face shields to protect themselves from flying objects uh from what she may want to pick up and throw she is a wild card and she is a uh 
a, a not a stable headed person so if we deal with her it's gonna have to be something that's pretty much uh relaxed calm and whatever do we want to put money into her getting married again to someone that the public don't believe is true and even if they made it to believe that it's true it may not come across on camera you know what i'm saying we're based upon ratchetness and giving us more reality than scripted even though they don't found out the formula that most of it is scripted and a little portion of it is reality but sometimes the, the waters get so murky things get so blurred we can't tell which is which and that's why the public some of the public have deemed Portia a risk for the negative and I don't know if that would be a good idea I don't know if it's worth us putting millions into something and paying her millions and it just may be you know look hell look at her book started off at 30 something dollars went down to 13 do can we afford to lose money on her when we have other projects in the works that's just probably what is being discussed and Portia has been left out of those important decisions even though she may come with this that, and the third they're like I don't know because you said that about your family and then look at the aftermath after that hell ain't nobody's family with you we couldn't even do no reunion on and get each uh, each uh family members take on what actually happened and transpired and how did it go so wrong you know because a lot of people were telling me no aunt liz only got on that show because of her activism this and i'm like no no she got on now to show her ass is what she did because she knows better she knows how to talk to the camera she knows what situations to stay away from but since you know i have good family members and they talked to me very respectfully i had to rethink it that's okay maybe they did sell uh miss liz pipe dreams okay that she was going to be showed and give it enough time to talk about her father's uh legacy and the food bank and stuff like that we're going to be seeing her get involved in the community on other advocate type work and just that you know maybe they sold her uh, uh, you know a, a, a smoke dream pipe dreams and it didn't end up that well maybe they did it but they edited it out because it was boring you know people don't like to look at you know good stuff they don't want they they need drama in their life they need something to separate the drama that's in their lives they need something to look at that they know kind of is fictitious but a lot of it could be true because they're playing the part on their social media platforms and they're acting the part when they're out there in the streets point taken give an example nene leaks you see her in the airport you better not speak to her don't make no eye contact don't even come close don't even come up six feet give her 24 feet okay or she gonna go off on you and it ain't gonna be pleasant she don't like to be around no layman's type people no everyday folk she up there with the criminal the crim in her mind she feels she needs to display that outwardly so if you ain't acting right you ain't towing line don't I mean don't take no pictures of her don't look at her don't come close to her okay uh you'll be doing okay in her eyes you follow those directions now if you don't you got hell to pay so nini is not giving us that okay girlfriend type of I, you can hang out with me i can hang out with you party type girl she don't act that way in real life okay and you can say the same for some other people as well but with covid out there no nobody need to be going nowhere and i don't even know why they think i, I caught some youtubers uh that i like to watch saying the uh cast of real housewives of Atlanta went to jamaica I'm like, why they can't stay their asses here in Georgia and film? Okay, why they gotta go way out there, over there? Okay, COVID over there too. Ain't going nowhere. It's everywhere. So why you gonna go over there, risk your time again, sit because you need to have an exotic place of filming? Damn that. Okay, come on over here and deal what's in Atlanta, Georgia, because I'm sure a lot of shit is going on behind the scenes that you know you can show us and we can laugh and kiki and be like okay <laughs> you know what i'm saying gonna bring all that stuff back to your family members that's a that's some booty but that's how you know the industry is you don't get a chance to really think it full through only thing that's driving you is that money 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 and that opportunity to be seen more to be given uh another what do you call it another stair step to moving up the ladder in the entertainment world 
it, you know they they own you and pretty much you don't own them they own you in the grand scheme of things because you have to think about it and me and my daughter was talking about this uh last time at least lame folks such as i say professional people out here or the people that work everyday jobs we get to retire god willing okay we have a set time that we say we finna retire and that's it we're gonna enjoy life whether we done made the money or we ain't made the money don't really matter we clocking out on anybody's job at 62 no later than 65 okay some people may last to 68 i'm looking at 62 myself but anyway when do these celebrities retire when do they have a really good uh benefit packet that they don't have to put together themselves that they have to pay for they don't have that y'all these jokers be like for example the music industry people ron eyes that damn damn near 100 years old he's still out there trying to tour still out there trying to sign for when are you going to retire man when are you going to retire okay gladys knight out there still out there touring see oh Ceylon, see what's her name see Sion Delon. Wait a minute. Damn, y'all know who I'm talking about. The white actress, uh, British actress, I mean singer. Uh, famously known for the Tantanic song, My Heart Will Go On. Uh, even though she is having some uh, medical problems. But she's still out there, damn near 100, trying to uh, uh, entertain people. Hell, Aretha Franklin, when she was living. Out there, old as hell. Need to be retired. Sat down, let somebody else imitate her. And she laughing, kiki, and, and whatever, and make little... Uh, show appearances here and there but you know don't be singing that so just let everybody honor you you know what i'm saying or be on a show basically that you get to give your opinions there ain't no real hard thing you just show up give your opinion leave you know what i'm saying that's good for your mind to activate your mind keep your mind going and you know be uh sparking you know electricity up there so you won't go deaf i mean go dumb up there and and everything just closes out you shut down and be like brain dead you know what i'm saying just keep your mind active play games play memory games and you know do that kind of thing hell they even had Betty White up there 99 years old would have been 100 this year and she's still out there trying to act and carry on like what when do you retire in the industry see that's what I'm saying I wouldn't be a part of that shit uh uh I need to have me a retirement plan whether it's fruitful or not whether it's financially or not it's going to be a time where I don't want to get up I don't want to go clock out clock in you know be responsible for doing something else for somebody else I uh-uh. hell if i even had my own business i wouldn't want to i want a retirement okay i don't want to deal with anything or anybody i just want to be <laughs> i just want to be i want to be me you know but that's all i got for this particular video guys like it love it, gotta have more don't hesitate to come over to the house and visit me put down those comments have a chit chat with me okay about conversation the topic at hand all right or if you want to say hey how you doing <laughs> what you doing glad to hear from you you know even little short cute stuff like that i always uh give you a little heart or if you say something that i got to talk about with you i'm putting down them comments so we could continue to dialogue together it's just having a conversation people just opening up expressing yourself on a fleet a free platform and uh doing a little chuckling here and there but there ain't no hateration over here we don't drink hate we just give our opinions we pour out opinions and and, and um uh try to uplift each other <laughs> when we can but we play if we being foul out there we will get called out you will get called out but now nah, ain't no hateration over here we are non-biased people and we do have people that they stand firm on who they like why they like them and they're gonna continue to ride for them and that's cool have no no uh, horse in this race okay but y'all i enjoy y'all and uh i will see y'all next video take care Bye bye